Hello, my name is Ron Seifert. I'm the head librarian here at Northeastern Technical College. And I am Mark Nakamis. I teach English and religion here at NETC. And today we're going to talk to you briefly about collaborating with faculty and how to switch a course to an OER. And I'll get started. And like I said, I'm the head librarian. I started here about three years ago. And when I came to Northeastern, OERs were just barely bubbling under the surface. A few people knew what they were, but not many. So I sent out a survey. I said, hey, guys, who knows what OERs are and who would like to use them? And I got one response back, and it was this guy right here. It was me. It was Mark, and we kind of became the <laughs> dynamic OER duo. And we're very proud of that title. And we've worked together and done a lot of great things here at Northeastern. And the way I got started, I knew that my instructors were a very competitive bunch. And I thought, if I can get one instructor to really embrace OERs and to start doing it, I can get them all to do it. So Mark and I started talking like, Mark, let's get you named as a pile, a professor for affordable learning with Pascal. Let's get you on their website, get you awarded, and let's see what happened. And at that time, I had kind of stumbled upon OERs myself. I had developed uh, my own course handbook for English 101, which of course is English Composition 1. Over a period of years, I realized that I had been making lots of supplementary handouts, which meant that the textbook that the students were paying over $100 for wasn't meeting our needs. And then I realized, wow, this just doesn't make sense. So I took the, you know, the, the leap of faith, and then I buckled down, developed a lot more supplementary materials, and didn't order the textbook. Had the handbook printed from our print shop and bound, and the students, it was bought it at cost. So it was maybe like a dollar and, and some change, and it was really, really popular. Then I started to go online and educate myself because, as Ron said, this was before he had arrived here at NETC, and I stumbled upon open educational resources on my own. And then one course at a time, I started to adopt them for the, the different books that the students are paying hundreds of dollars for. And if your campus hasn't started the embracing OERs, I highly recommend sitting down with your English faculty who teach 200 level literature classes. That would be like American Lit 1 and 2, English Lit 1 and 2, and World Lit 1 and 2. Let me take that over real quick to sure. hijack my presentation. <laughs> but once I got Mark listed as a pilot, everybody else wanted to be named a professor for affordable learning. And then I really saw OERs taking off here. People could not change fast enough. Mark has always been the high performer instructor here, and they figured if Mark is doing this, we need to do it so we can keep up with him. Yeah, and what 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 you get, you get a PAL award, the you know a certificate that's framed, and you get to put it on your wall. So you have you know some, you get to show off that. You get a little sticker you can put on your car, and then people naturally competitive, and you're just like, wow, he's getting recognized for doing some stuff, and wow. He's saving the students money, and wow, his classes are always full because there's no mm -hmm. cost for the textbook. So it, it just kind of really, you know, starts to snowball, just one and then another and then another. And then you start to just sit down with different faculty in their offices and educate them on using OERs and kind of walk them through the, the process. I'm sorry for interrupting. With that's, that. that's fine. I think Mark and I, this is maybe our 10th conference. I, I've, I've lost track. We've done numerous state ones. We've done some national conferences. We're always willing to help anyone with OERs. I'm going to turn it over to Mark. Yeah. And he's going to show you very quickly how to find your OER sources. Yeah. And there's um, lots of websites out there. This is a, a good one to begin with. This is Merlot.org. And due to the time constraints, I'm not going to go through and do a, a live search but you're going to search through the different repositories of OERs just like you would for any website or, you know, 
for any, any Google search. So this is an example, right? So I typed in American literature, and this is an example of what you would see. You'll notice that it gives the descriptors here with keywords. There's the user rating for quality to the right. That's always important to take a look at. And then you just click on the red link for go to material. And then this is an example of an OER. This is open anthology of early American literature. And then you click on read book. And then the contents are to the left. So these are all the different selections here, right? There it is. Everything's right there. This is, you know, almost exactly what's going on with the Norton anthologies that are hundreds of pages long. And how much does this cost? It's free. It's free. So what you would do is you could just take the link and drop it into your LMS, or you can download it as a PDF and just drop the PDF into your LMS. Another thing to check out that not too many people are familiar with is Project Gutenberg. This is packed full of free books that are in the, the public domain. If something's in the public domain, go and get it. For example, never pay for Chaucer. He's dead. He's not making any money off his work. This is an example of the, the Canterbury Tales. You'll see at the very top of the page here, anybody can use this at no cost with no, re, no restrictions. You can copy it, give it away, reuse it under terms, which are included here, right? Because this is public domain. It's the same thing. So scrolling down a little bit into this page, we can see the complete works of the, the Canterbury Tales. For example, you can click on the prologue, and there it is. One that April with his short of salt, the drought of March hath pissed to the road. Why do you make your students buy something that they can get online for free? Why did you make us hear that? Oh, because it's like, it's like having jewels in your mouth <laughs> reading Middle English. I miss it. I miss students so badly. So what, what, what you can actually do with, with this material you can copy paste it into a Word doc and save it as a PDF and make your own book using those materials in Project Gutenberg. And it's, it's, you're not breaking copyright at all. And could you also record yourself reading it for the students? Yes, you can. And here's something that's really cool about public domain that a lot of people aren't familiar with. Guess what just entered into the public domain? That's right, The Great Gatsby. So we're, you can do these things with all these wonderful works of literature that you're using in your classes already, stop making the students buy for things that are free. And, you know, it's just so exciting what's going on with open educational resources, all these works of literature that have entered into the public domain. That is so true. And thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah. And like we said before, if you're working on OERs, we're always glad to work with you, talk with you, reach out and get in touch, and we're glad to help. And again, my name is Mark Nakamas. And I'm Ron Stafford. And we're from Northeastern Technical College, which is in Sherrill. The lovely town of Sherrill, Dizzy Gillespie's hometown. All right. All right. Thank you guys so much. Thanks for your time, everybody. Bye.